Hello and welcome back to the Monch Hours Podcast. You're tuning in for this horror episode. It's about October. It's spooky season and we're ready to get spooky. I'm John and I'm here with my good, fantasmical, extra spooky friend, Mr. Jordan. Oh, I'm extra scurries today. What's up, guys? <laughs> He's getting in the mood. Oh, I'm getting in the mood. I wish I had like a, like a pumpkin mask or like a... Looking like a, what is it, the Sleepy Hollow, like the Headless Horseman with the pumpkin, oh, okay. jack-o'-lantern on my head, yeah. Yeah, bro, I wish I had that going. <laughs> That'd be I good don't. to see. <laughs> but yeah. It's got my natural scary face. Natural scary face, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so like I mentioned, this is all going to be about horror and um, our take on it and what we, you know, our favorite kind of horror anime and manga that we've seen and we'll kind of jump into the recaps a little bit later on um so thanks for tuning in uh let's cue the intro and crack a cold one welcome to to the munch hours podcast where we we consume manga and anime will with pleasure crack a cold one and enjoy the, the, the show I hope we can finally fight without any distractions now. How do you know the Muju style? Fate is a fascinating thing. The Muju style would be something that I alone am the master of. There's no escaping that it's your destiny to die by my hand. Since it is destiny, I'd like to see what the hand of God is all about. Gladly. I've been sitting idle now for far longer than I would have liked. I'm not going there to die. I'm going to find out if I'm really alive. I have to do it, Faye. It's all a dream. Yeah, just a dream. And we're back. What are you drinking, my friend? Uh, I'm drinking a Big Swell IPA, bro. Oh, Big Swell. Keeping it island style. <laughs> bro, you see the shotgun, man. Shotgun, dude, I did a double shotgun. Oh, you double shotgun? No. All right, man, I can't yeah. compare. Sorry. I'm, uh, I may be <laughs> on the coast, but I'm not that, that much of an islander here in California. Neither am I, dude. I'm an outsider. Well, you never know, man. One big earthquake, we might be going. We might be neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, be a uh, Japan sinks, uh, California edition. Cali sinks, 2021. Damn. Uh, end of 2020. I mean, they made a bunch of movies, dude. I mean, the way 2020 is going, I don't, I don't doubt it. That's a natural progression. Yeah, it only, it only, it's only uh, would would feel right on that on that instance um but yeah so i'm drinking uh what do i actually I don't even remember what i got i got too excited tarantula hill this is again thousand oaks um oh yeah liquid 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 candy hazy oh, ipa oh. you know i keep it with the hazies mine's faded days did <laughs> something like that <laughs> i don't even know where you're going with i don't that. know what there was like a um wasn't like a movie Fate, haze? Dazed and confused. Dazed and confused. I was gonna get hey. I was gonna say hazed and confused. Um, but yeah, thanks. That's where I was going with that. <laughs> faded and hated. Uh, faded and hated and right dated now. <laughs> and dilapidated. Let's go. I'm feeling good. But yes, like oh. I mentioned in our intro, um, this theme of the week is horror and anything that kind of encompasses that. So with that, uh, Jordan, when you think of horror. What's like the first thing that comes to mind, whether it be anime or manga? Uh, I think you'll agree. It's got to be Junji Ito, dude. Yes, sir. Has to be. Oh, man. The master of the body horror. 
It's like, we've talked about it, and he's not your typical scaries, you know, ghosts and shit. It's, uh, basically, I, all, I don't know, it almost always ends up coming back to just body horror. Body horror, See, or mean, like, like, almost, I mean, there's a body horror, but there's also, like, a deep kind of unsettling uneasiness you get from reading his work and it's like i guess the best way i could explain it is like if you go to a theater right and you go watch a scary movie recently like one of the new ones and you get a lot of jump scares you go, ah, and it gets you but like once you leave the theater it kind of just fades away but like when you yeah. it's like it's almost just like on the front end like it's it's like it doesn't really touch you like spiritually when you read like a junji work um it kind of like just makes you feel a certain way, like it, like oh, that's just yeah, blah. makes you makes you feel. I don't know. You gotta check yourself. You're like, all right, I'm in place. Like my body's not fucked up. You're, you're looking over your you shoulder, know, going, oh shit. Yeah, and like it, I don't know. He deals with a lot of like different concepts too. Like, uh, I mean, beyond like the the body horror, I feel like there's been like the instances where he's like touched on like like attractiveness and that being like a power right so like people using their their looks to gain power over another and that's i mean that's another aspect that could be like horrifying like someone having control of you just with you know you being infatuated or whatever which happens you know in reality not in the the supernatural way but you know in like way it translates that that is like a power some people gain just by how they look it's interesting yeah and I, in it going along with that too like one of my favorite couple of my favorite junji Ito stories uh or mangas or his works is um one that you know isn't necessarily body hard but my one of my favorites is the hanging hanging blimp which consists of like essentially just like people dying to themselves like said like all of a sudden like these apparitions these ghostly apparitions like massive like essentially blip size like massive balloons like the size of a house almost um of people's own faces come and they have uh a noose attached to the bottom of them so like it's like a moving living soul balloon like haunted balloon that comes by and swoops people and, and hangs them and kills them that way and um I've, you know it's kind of crazy you never really think of that kind of concept that's one of my favorites, yeah. and that revol- that involves like no, no um, body uh, disfiguration, except for one. There is one part where, because um, you know they're like balloons essentially, so they get the idea like, oh, I'm just gonna pop it, I'm gonna pop it, and, yeah. I'll, and I'll pop and it'll go away. Well, the balloon mimics a face of a person. You know, it is essentially the embodiment of a person. So these like school schools school girls are running away, and then a guy jumps out the window, looks out the window with like, a crossbow. He's like, I'll save you. And he shoots one of them that are chasing the girls. And then the balloon yeah. gets popped, like, and it starts, like, releasing air. And the balloon's, like, shrinking and stuff. And it's like, yeah. And then the girl looks to one of her friends. And her face is doing the same thing. Like, it's getting, like, the same. Deflated? It's deflating, yeah. It's like a mirror oh. of what happens. <laughs> so, like, there's no escape almost. Like, if you if you fight it, like, there's almost no win. It's, there's no win. And it's so crazy because then people are locked into their, you know, apartments or houses and they had to find a way to survive. And the balloons can talk and they're all saying, like, they know you're, they're essentially you, so they know your deepest, darkest, like, secrets and fears and regrets and all that. So I think, like, that's the concept to me. I was like, oh, geez, man. Like, how do you think of this? Yeah. It's weird with his stories. It seems like it usually, like, it's a some like weird supernatural thing affecting a whole town it's not just isolated to you know one person or like a a household like a haunted house story or anything like that it's usually such a broad scope where you know thousands of people are experiencing this horror it's a lot the scale is a lot bigger than most the most horror stories yeah exactly yeah and i think i think um i guess i could kind of like an introduction uh, it's like hard for me and why it's, like you just mentioned I, I didn't think about it but like it's a it's a much more grandiose almost world kind of um spec or country like scope of things um growing up you know i'm a big i've 
I was used to be a big horror fan, like or a zombie buff. And then of course, you know, as you get older, some of your passions subside for priorities and all that. <laughs> Being an adult, and um, like I remember, like the first horror movie that scared me as a kid and gave me nightmares for days, weeks, months was um, the first Nightmare on Elm Street with Freddy Krueger. Um, and ever since then, even though it gave me nightmares, like once I was able to get over that, um, and get older, of course, like I've been kind of just like a infatuated with the horror scene and yeah. you know like you mentioned like freddy cougar for example affects a small group of people um and you have like it the clown which is another one which is a small group of people and then like jason small group of people kind of these cult films and yeah. you develop into you know like again like the more ghost and ghouls of that kind of scene and then you know all of a sudden you get older than like me for example i was like huge 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 um uh, what's that zombie show on? Uh, the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead show. Like, I had, like, when the first two seasons came out, I was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. Like, there was really true zombie fear. Like, it was a massive scale. Like, the whole world was affected. I even had, like, the movie, like, had a black and white version and all that. I was super into it. And then, obviously, you know, Walking Dead, as it progressed, it turned into, like, a piece of flaming, flaming shit. Um, <laughs> which, uh, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like, I've been into this kind of horror scene. Uh, for quite some time and, and and not so much like the big you know horror movies we started off with like freddy cougar uh jason and um friday the 13th and all that but then you kind of get into like the more niche films um niche yeah. uh, even like experience expanding into you know, foreign films and some of the foreign films are like, some of the best i've seen were again zombie Ooh, movies yeah. like the french one the horde and then one that i always 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 recommend is the uh, korean one which is trained basant um one of the best zombie movies ever, ever. So, like, that's... I just want to give a quick introduction of, like, where my headspace is where in horror in general. I mean, I've even read yeah. Dracula, the original Dracula by Bram Stoker, you know. I've read that, too. Like, that's... Like, I got really into that scene once in a while. Um, but, yeah, I want to kind of, like, throw it to you. You know, what was your first... Uh, like, how was your growth into horror, like, if you have any growth into it, like... If you can tell uh, us, like, the readers and listeners and watchers. Like you said, uh, it does, like, start, you know, once you get that bug, it's usually early on. And I remember just staying up late and, like, watching, like, all the horror movies. Because they, they'd all usually come on, you know, 10 o'clock at night. Right. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's probably, like, the spooky time, so they're trying to get you in that mood. But I remember, like, the first time seeing... I didn't see the original Night of the Living Dead mm-hmm. until I was a little older, so the, the black and white one. But I saw like the remake, and then the, you know the the subsequent you know uh, sequels to that. And I just remember loving, like falling in love with those zombie movies, especially the old you know the uh, the old ones. So it was all you know a lot of practical effects in those, and I just love that concept of just you know. There's, it's, an, a, it's an affection that's taking over, and it's basically making people monsters, and right. survivors have to fight back. Yeah. So that would, that part of horror, that's that little that genre, the zombie genre. That's where that first got me, you know. But then I progressed into, uh, I, I started liking you know haunted house movies. So like ghost movies became like my my go to. Mm-hmm. Just the jump scares. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's something you get that thrill, <laughs> even though like when you actually jump, you like look around. You're like, shit, I just look like a punk. But <laughs> a sudden shock of adrenaline coursing through your body. Yeah, and you know, in high school, like me and like friends, our mutual friends, we'd always like go to Redbox and just rent whatever horror movie was out. Yeah. and you know, we were we'd always go for. Like ones we hadn't even heard of it like you know they weren't mainstream right right that's the cool thing about horror movies is there's such a fandom for it that there's so many that you haven't heard of that are out there and popular amongst you know the horror scene but don't get any mainstream traction right so yeah that's basically like my like history cool. right now i'm watching uh the haunting of bly manor and that's Giving me some serious. It's pretty good. You know, I swapped it out this this season. Um, this like, of course, when Halloween rolls around, everybody gets to, into that uh, spooky type 
deal. They, that's when they pick up the horror movies and they come on Netflix and all that. This time, mm-hmm. this I switched it up. You know, I haven't seen that much movies. I've been reading my my uh, Junji Junji Ito collection that I have here, which is um, a collection. I, I'll bring it. It's Shivers, which has like about ten of his stories in there. One has hanging blimps. So I've been reading like one story a night, um, and I haven't become deranged, lost of sleep yet, but. Um, it's different for me. Instead of watching movies, I've, I've been actually playing uh, Phasmophobia. I don't know if you, have, if you haven't heard of that game. It's a Steam game where you and three of your friends are ghost hunters, and you have to ex- essentially go into these haunted places, uh, find out what kind of ghost it is due to how it's haunting you and other things, and then you leave, and you get like money, and you level up, and you get paid that way. But it's extremely extremely horrifying because you get so immersed into it it can only carry like three items and all of a sudden like like the first five minutes the ghost doesn't hunt anybody and then and as time progresses it gets worse and worse and worse and um yeah. like lights start flickering your flashlight turns off you're hearing like one of the craziest things was like we we're all searching um like this haunted high school and shane goes um uh, shane was on the podcast he's like wait are you guys are you guys singing and we're like, what? No. Oh, no. <laughs> and he's like, no, someone's singing in my headset right now. A girl's oh, singing oh. in my headset. And we're like, what the fuck? And then I started hearing it too. And I was like, oh, my God. And I immediately got tense. And, like, I got super tense. And the ghost showed up, mm-hmm. like, right in front of Like, it popped. It jump scared Shane. And I went to go over there and see what's going on. And as I turned the corner, it was in my face. And I, like, uh, literally bro. yelped. I yelped and I tensed <laughs> and I pulled my shoulder muscle because I, like, got shriveled up like a little kid. I went, Ugh! Um, and it scared the <laughs> shit, like actual shit out of me. So that's what I've been doing. Like a little brief story of phasmophobia. If you haven't played it yet, it's like 13 bucks on steam. If you guys have been thinking about trying it, seriously, it's worth every freaking penny. If you're, if you're into that. And I've been telling you what, man, I've been having some good scares. Yeah. I went and watched some, some people playing it after you told me about right. it last week. And yeah, I was getting anxiety. I wasn't even fucking playing it. I was just watching and I was like, oh, man, my palms are sweaty. <laughs> like, I was, you know, the lights were flickering on and off. People go in the room and, like, the light would already be on. And it was like, uh-uh, like, you leave that room. No, yeah, and sometimes you can't because, like, it'll lock the front door on you and you can't leave. Yeah, that's what that what happened when one of the playthroughs I was watching. I was like, nope, I don't think I do well in this game. <laughs> but, yeah, so um, we, got, we got a little bit off track there, which is, which is freaking awesome because, as you can tell, we're passionate about this um the scene so i've mentioned my favorite junji ito story what what's your what's your favorite one for junji ito i mean i the one that always sticks out is uzumaki uzumaki just the yeah yeah this i don't know the images there's so many iconic images that you probably see just popping up on instagram or if you follow any twitter yeah any of the anime scenes manga scenes they are all like constantly being you know reposted and it's like a testament to how striking the imagery is because if i'm not mistaken the like uzumaki was first released in the 80s yeah 1983 i think it was and that's just insane that that it's had such staying power that people are still to this day you know almost 40 years later are still... sorry 1998 original release date oh not, oh oh shit well we gave it <laughs> I, I, I still literally 20 something years something. That's crazy. Anyways, yeah. But uh, it's just crazy. Like, it's these images. This I don't know. I always think of the the snails, like the people snails. Yeah. Like, that really just sticks in my mind as just terrifying for some reason. And it's not like snails are scary by themselves, but when you slap a person's face on it, and then, you know, you're like, all right, that is not cool. That is something that it, it goes back to like I've never would even imagine this, and seeing it now in front of my eyes, and it's so. It just he just has a way to like strike you at your core. I, don't, I can't. It's hard to explain unless you've read it. I mean, if you've seen it, if you read his works, you would understand what we're talking about. And maybe, maybe it's the type of medium where you know you're flipping the page, right? And it's like you are in control of the page. It's not like a movie or something. You're in control, and you go. Whoosh, and then you see it, so it's almost like self-induced, <laughs> self-induced yeah. shock. And you can also sit in like a panel, like a, you know, a movie. It 
gives you like maybe a few seconds of seeing like an image but when you're reading it you can actually just sit there and stare for however long you want and like really just take, take it, it in, in and oh allow the horror to like get its good point its claws good into point. yeah yeah um so as you know you mentioned uzumaki uh are you excited for the animated release in 2021 i am I I mean I'm surprised it hasn't happened already to be honest right. like with that being such a huge title. So yeah, but I'm definitely excited for that. I I'm sure it's going to be great. I mean especially after watching most of the Junji Ito collection which on Crunchyroll I think Funimation too. Right. Which I need to go back and watch again. Yeah. Come to like forget like all of them cuz it's just you know a like it's called titled a collection it takes a bunch of his stories and kind of puts it into a progressive storyline but mm -hmm. yeah i i'm pretty pumped for that and um it's gonna be interesting to see I, what i really like about the anime um how it's coming out it's coming out in like the adult swim tsunami block so the late at night and i think that's so fitting for it because um as if you're us 90s kids uh remember like uh we you know staying up late and watching not the, not necessarily horror, but you know some of these mature, um, mature anime series. Like I remember, not even like Trigon isn't like that much of a mature series, um, or even like Dot Hack Side. But like I bring those two up because that was, I remember that was my first like introduction into like kind of like a fucked up scene where like I remember like Trigon there was like a rape scene or like um, a, it was. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you didn't see it; it was off screen, but you insinuated that it happened. And I remember I was like, felt like really bad. Like I was like, "Oh, what the fuck?" And I was like, "That's so like, why is that? Oh, that's so unsettling, right?" And now we have Uzu yeah. uh, the Uzumaki anime coming on at that same time, like in that space. I feel like it just belongs there because that's what a lot of things belong to. Like even like Inuasha, and like seeing these demons and they're kind of like grotesque figures, uh, how they're portrayed. Yeah. You know, you're kind of like, "Ooh, what the heck?" And now we. Fast forward, boom! Uzumaki on on the Dull Swim to Nami, man. I'm I'm excited. Yep, it's gonna be beautiful in a real <laughs> twisted way, literally twisted, <laughs> twisted way. For way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and you know, I think like it's so funny. Like I brought this book, and I'm gonna show it again here. Uh, I'm actually get my camera. Make sure I'm showing it to the camera. Uh, uh, let's let the f let it focus on there. Yeah, Shiver. It's like got ten of his films. Or ten of his works on there, and uh, my younger brother's like youngest one is super super into Halloween and like the and, like ghosts and ghouls. And he's like unfazed, man. He's like unfazed. It takes a lot to scare him. He's a, he's he's a badass in that in that way, um, and he doesn't really like anime at all or manga, just not his thing. So, I mean, he never really tried. Um, so I bought him this book as a way for like us to connect. Like, oh, you like aura? I like r2 and anime and manga why don't you read this and if you like it then you know we can like i'll start recommending him shows and, and but he never he never read it he's like nah <laughs> he's it's he never like left his desk and all that like there's no crease in the book anywhere it's just like unopened I was, like, you tried bro i tried man i know i can't you can't say i never tried so i took it i said all right well i'm reading it for myself so it's a win either way what about you? Did uh, um, what is uh, your younger brother uh, Hayden into the, like the horror anime manga? Uh, I don't think he is. We haven't really talked about like the horror scene, mm -hmm. especially in anime and manga. Uh, I'm pretty sure I tried to get him on to like Tokyo Ghoul at one point. He might be. He might. Uh, I think he watched like Promise Neverland. I mean, I guess you can associate Death Note with horror. So I need to talk to him about that, to be honest. Yeah, you know, I think that's a good point that you mentioned right there, um, or series that you brought up, such as Promise Neverland and Death Note. Um, and it's it, it's something to where uh, we briefly talked about this before we came on the cast. But um, and I'll get into this where we, I want to ask you, you know, your favorite horror anime that you witnessed, that you watched. I don't, why did I say witness? Like it's a murder scene because it's like horror. Um, <laughs> but it is. It's a murdering my innocence. Yeah. I mean, the pro yeah, shit. you mentioned Promise Neverland. I did not expect things to go the way they did episode one. Um, but like, so, okay. The question is. Um, what is your favorite horror anime or what comes to mind? Like, not what your favorite, but what's fresh in your mind currently? 
and maybe we can expand on like how things that we may not have considered horror actually to be horror like it just kind of took us and then immersed us into its series so there's two for me that really are like striking and one i mean the so i'm going to talk about tokyo ghoul yeah for sure man and i i I've, I've only watched the first season and it's one of those things i've been meaning to get caught up on but uh i just remember there is a you haven't watched tokyo ghoul no not at all I, I, you can i'm not afraid of spoilers i've seen enough of spoilers on just how it is okay well there's towards the end of the first season i'm pretty sure it was only like a 12 episode season so it's building up there's a character his name is jason and he wears like you know the, the iconic jason Voorhees mask so you know the the scheme or the hockey mask yeah so he's like basically that character and at the end of like i think it's episode 10 out of 12 he's got the main character and he's like torturing him like literally like sitting there he's like strapped to a chair and he's going through and just like hardcore torturing him and it's literally like unsettling watching this even though it's animated it's you know it's the way it's done it really like it like hurt me like there was probably moments where i had my hand like kind of doing the half like shade your eyes to like not fully see what you're seeing and you're hearing like the screams and like i got goosebumps (laughs) dude it's it really hit me like that might be the only moment in like an anime a horror anime where i was actually like to the point where i was visibly unsettled like there's i'm i've seen things in the anime that are like oh that's not that's not good like dead man wonderland like there's every scene is fucked up yeah but i don't think i was ever sitting there like shading my eyes and like afraid to look at the screen because it was that intense so that's like the i can't attest to the rest of the series because i've only seen the first season which i really liked but yeah, maybe that scene, maybe that episode, like scarred me to the point, like subconsciously, where I was like, I can't go forward and watch another season where something like this might happen again. Right, right. Um, so like that's I want to jump in there probably... and say, dude, I don't watch Tokyo Ghoul, and it's because of that. I've heard of that scene. And this, I don't like, like I like horror and all that. I don't like gore. I don't like gore. Um, like I yeah. and like um, like the Saw series, for example. Like I I've seen one number one and that's it like i've never seen any other saw film like torture yeah, that way. <laughs> and gore i'm just like i can't take it man it just like he just really really affects me until i'm like losing sleep and kind of thinking about it too much i'm just like nah i'm gonna i'm gonna pass yeah, on that sure. i'm gonna pass on that yeah definitely definitely don't watch tokyo ghoul for that because <laughs> that's my reason you probably, don't hate me you'll probably be uh like me like shading your eyes like it might make you fucking lose your mind. <laughs> dude. Uh, we can't be having that, dude. Yeah. 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 How about you, though? Same question. Like, There's a lot, dude. When I what? really started thinking about, like, what exactly, like, series that I've seen that comes into horror, like, um, I'm just, I'll just, it's hard to choose one because it all starts kind of blending in there. So, ah, uh, let's see. Um, if I were to go back, like, Serial Experience Lane, like, back, you know, when I was a kid, was really kind of fucked up. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember that. That was on, um, like, this girl kind of finds, like, her middle schooler commits suicide. Uh, but then she's, like, living in the internet or something. And she goes on, like, this weird cyberpunk kind of... It just, like, progresses. It's really weird, like, shit. Um, that, I remember that affected me. That came to mind. Um, and I have to, like... Of course, like, 90s kids are like, dude, you probably, probably haven't talked about Serial Experience Lane. Um... And I think with, like, that series, like, I watched it, and it was probably similar to how I just mentioned about the gore thing. And, like, I've, I would watch it, and I don't like how I felt, especially as a child. So I'm probably like, ooh. And maybe, like, I sheltered it away from, like, my mindscape. Because it was, um, the, what kind of just, like, I, I mean, to be blunt, honest, I, I knew it was a thing, but I kind of just forgot about it and paid it no mind. Until um, last year, and I was living in Colorado Springs, there was this bar called uh, Sheba Bar. Um, and it was so sick, dude. They played like they had anime going on in the, in the, on the TVs, 
and like okay. serial experiment slain was playing and i couldn't take my eyes off it it was like i was in trance and i was like this is so weird it's like something that was like locked away in my mind that just happened to show up <laughs> you know um it was so crazy but that's one that comes to mind also like you mentioned the promised neverland i would say for sure is a horror horror-esque uh anime and that one just took me and just clutched me um from beginning to end and also most recently that i've seen is um ooh, i'm like burping <laughs> is um <laughs> parasite the maxim that was on netflix that i hardcore binge on that one that yeah. was pretty good. And it comes into, like, we're talking, of course, there's blood and there's gore, um, but it's not like like malice, like a, a torch. Like, it's not like intended, like, just rotten malice, like torturing people. Uh, so yeah. that one comes to mind. But there's also, like, honorable mentions. I haven't seen it, but, like, I always, I always hear about um, uh, High School of the Dead or Kagakuri. I always hear about those two. Uh, there's another one that, uh, which I just was thinking about it i brought it up here to talk about it um the corpse yeah the corpse what is it called corpse um corpse party or corpse something? party yeah i remember like back in the day like it was like get mojo <laughs> like get mojo top five just hit my like recommended on um youtube and like it was a scene that was going on there i was like whoa what the fuck that it looked a little bit too much for me, but um, there's quite a bit. Yeah, there's quite a bit. You can even think about like even Devil Man Cry Baby. I've seen some people mention that one, and that's one of my favorite animes of all time. And so it kind of just gets into the motion of like how we've become like has horror being so ingrained within anime that we just consider it a a part of it when it comes to that kind of series because they are horror, like very mature themes. Bad things happen. Scary things happen. You mentioned yeah. like it takes your eyes and you kind of like wince away from it. Um, shout out Dead Man Wonderland. Anime just fucking abruptly ended out of nowhere. Never forgive the studio that did that. <laughs> uh, yeah, what did they like run out of funding or what dude, happened there? Honestly, I think there was a funding and it was weird. Dude, I remember because um, that one is, 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 I consider it horror because, you know, it's just like people are trapped. Well, the first episode, this whole, this whole high school classroom gets obliterated. Um, yeah whoa what the fuck um that one ended out of nowhere and i remember like i remember it, it ended and i was like i think it was on toonami and i think it was on yeah it was like the reinsurgence reinsurgence of toonami when it first came back and it's all and it's all its glory and this is when we and you were on that richie branson shout out richie branson og otaku yeah. king um I'm like yeah man toonami's back we fucking pump, we're pumped and i was like watching it every week and then i just stopped showing up stop airing and i was like what the hell's going on and i looked it up and just like legit ended and uh yeah I was like, what the fuck is that about so whatever rest in peace dead man i should read the manga yeah let's, let's continue the story that way bro yeah i want to ask you so parasite that's is that uh like it, aliens is that what that is I've always wondered, like, because I, th I th thought I saw something that was kind of like alien yeah, so takes over a body. Is that what it what is? What ends up happening, essentially, these parasites come down from the sky. Maybe it's the earth, the moon. I think they touched into it, uh, and I, I'm not. I'm having trouble remembering what happened. But essentially, they're aliens, and yeah. they come like little embryos, like the size of, like, um, you know, the size of my thumb. And they go into people's body, and they go into their brain, and they take control of the brain, and they become essentially a, a symbiotic parasite type of thing. Well, just no, straight up parasite because it takes control of everything. If it does a, if it does its correct, um, you know, its correct uh, evolutionary process, it takes complete control of the host, and then they're yeah. they're able to control the body and change its DNA to where like uh, you've seen it where they can like change the head and like it's essentially a, a scythe weapon, a blade. And all that, and so what ends yeah. up happening is, uh, the MC, the the main uh, protagonist, like, he's awake when he sees a parasite like on his chest as he's sleeping or as he's laying in bed, and they try to go in through like you know the head so they can get to the brain, and so he he kind of jumps off, and then the parasite's like doing his thing, and they struggle, and he gets into his arm, and as the parasite's like crawling into like through his vein to get into his arm to his brain, he like gets a belt and he like stops it. From like progressing any yeah. further so like the parasite's gonna die um what was his, what was his name i think it was like moogie um 
and the main guys like Shinichi, Shinichi and, and Mugi, uh, whatever the Japanese term for um, uh, left hand or right. I think it was his right hand. Yeah, I think it was right hand. Um, Migi, I think it is. I think it's Migi. And um, so it gets trapped, so it decides to take control of the hand because it wants to live. And so because it didn't have a proper um, evolutionary process, Shinichi still has all control of his brain because the parasite just takes control of his hand. Um, now, what ends up happening as the story progresses is that they become essentially what I thought was super cool. They have a symbiotic parasite relationship, which, you know, the host and the parasite both benefit both benefit off each other um the parasite obviously has the potential but won't kill shinichi because if he does and the parasite does and because of that the parasite originally protects shinichi just out of survival cause because again if his brain goes off his body dies then migi will die uh, but then of course through time they develop a relationship even though they shouldn't and then it gets into it gets into like you have these horrors people are dying you know it's just like mass murders and shit um yeah but it the way the story progresses, it's super interesting. It makes you question. It's one of those series that make you go, huh. You know, originally it started, like, these are the parasites. But through the excellent storytelling, um, at the end of it, you're like, no, humans are the parasite to, like, the world and the animal and everything. So it makes you wonder, like, was this a creation of Earth that it released these alien things to come down and do a natural culling? Um, so, like, introduce a new a new top predator into the ecosystem to yeah. call and all that. So, it's really cool. I highly recommend it. Um, it's 26, 24 episodes long, so it's not, like, a, a, a really big binge, but you can, like, knock it out within a couple weeks. I highly recommend it. Yeah. It's really cool theories. Really, really cool twist and turn in, into, if I would talk about the narrative process and how the story portrays you do have like bad things that happen like like a character you really like is probably gonna die um and that's just how it is and and it does a really good job of um of portraying the very very real morality of human beings um i think we talked about the sport before like when you have and i guess it's what makes a horror anime series so good is is the the depth and the weight of death is real or like again you know like dbz they can just get revived by a dragon ball um so like yeah. if a character dies and like oh no worries i'll just get revived by a dragon ball sooner or later um but like in these horror films and like in parasite uh when a character dies they're dead like they're they're dead and they're dead dead there's nothing else um i think yeah. i just watched something recently where there's a big character death it's probably it's probably a manga I'm reading. Oh yeah, it was a manga. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. A character a character that I really liked, um, died, and I was like, damn, that fucking sucks, dude. So, oh man, that's why these <laughs> are good. That's why reading, horrors bro. are good. I like yeah. horrors for that aspect because we don't get that often yeah, in, in our usual like big deal animes. Yeah, you're right. That it adds like stakes to the storyline it's not you know our shonens where okay like there might be some trial and like big big moment that changes the character but you know their death isn't permanent you know dragon balls they come back you know they there's there's more weight to these the horror and these like suspense mangas animes compared to other the other uh genres so you're right that is a, such a cool like just medium of storytelling that yeah. adds to to your engrossment to it you know you grow more attached when these characters can be taken from you <laughs> right you know <laughs> yeah you kind of get you know you mad you mad about it and everything and um did you read the latest the latest chapter of chainsaw man by chance i did i read that uh, right before oh well we cool recording. so this, yeah. this plays into that when we talk about it later uh so we'll get yep. into that but yeah um so that's i guess a big what what the heck did we even oh you asked me about my favorite series and then <laughs> 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 okay um wow that it, and parasite you asked me about parasite so parasite, anyways yeah. um that's this week's john's tangent of the week <laughs> yeah uh 
we get one one every week so yes there sir. we go yes, sir but yeah <laughs> so um dude i'd be uh i feel like i'd be at a miss if we didn't talk about and i haven't finished it but monster and uh I hear like the anime is you know top notch, and I haven't got to that point. I wanted to read through the manga first, and I've slowly been doing that, and that truly is like a masterpiece in horror. So I uh, I'm not sure if I've talked to you about it, mm-hmm. but the whole premise is a surgeon, top surgeon, in at his hospital. He, you know, he's trying to do what's right. You know, these people come in and they need surgery, and because of how like the system is kind of corrupt they obviously are gonna want to take care of the people who are you know more with more wealth or more influence so they the hospital could maybe get something out of keeping them safe and this doctor he doesn't want to you know do that he doesn't want to play into that he wants to help people who are there in need at that moment and not placate to some you know, play to, to, to the wealthy and not give special treatments. All right. So he he goes about, there's a, I think like the, the mayor or someone is dying, has like a stroke at the same time as uh, this kid. He comes into the hospital. I think he was shot or something. I can't remember. And his directors are telling him to save the the mayor after he's already like in surgery for this kid they want him to leave and go save you know the the politician and he refuses and saves this kid and the the mayor i think it's a mayor but he dies and so the, the the real horror comes when this kid grows up and becomes a killer so it's like that mind oh. that mind game of like like, how would you feel like if someone you saved ends up killing others? And it, oh, I mean, where shit. I'm at in this, in this, yeah, where I'm at in the story, he's this uh, kid. He's an adult, and he he has such respect for this doctor for saving him, and he kind of starts like killing people who are standing in the doctor's way of progressing in his career. So he's like doing him favors, but the doctor's like horrified because he doesn't want anyone to die you know he's a he's a surgeon yeah it's his job to save people <laughs> and this kid is or this guy he's an adult now is killing people for his the surgeon's benefit but he doesn't want that and it's just such a like mindfuck is the only term i could think of because such a twisted scenario where he's benefiting from it but he doesn't want to he saved this kid but kid is literally evil And it's just such a crazy just relationship that's going on. Monster, you know, like yeah, it's literally the title's perfect. And I yeah, I want to finish the manga before I watch it, which both I hear are just you know superb. So I'm I'm definitely looking forward to actually getting to watch the anime as well. Damn. Okay. Yeah, it's on YouTube too. It's all (laughs) all on there. I think it's. Because that's a, I don't think it's released on any streaming platform. I think the publisher, someone released it on just YouTube for free, which is weird. Yeah, that's badass. Yeah, I see some right here, like dubbed and whatever. Yeah. And whatnot. Oh, I'm looking out, man. Let me check that out. But yeah, it's, oof, makes me sweat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's um, unfortunately, I think we already have to wrap this up here, on, at least on the theme. Um, we're, like, pushing a 45-minute mark. Uh, so, wow, that went by fast. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, we're, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up unless you want, like, is there something, like, other series or manga um, that you want to, like, high-key, low-key, key? Oh, man, there's <laughs> so many. Like, I know. Like, we didn't even talk about, like, Attack on Titan, yeah. which is horrifying. Uh, Castlevania on Netflix, which is damn good, better than it should be. Sure. Uh, even, like, Japan Sinks, which I Japan watched Sinks. and talked about uh, in previous episodes. Right. Like, that's a different type of horror. There's so many. And, like, all of our episodes. Psycho Pass, that's a get... good one. Psycho, oh, my God, yeah. This sucks. There's, there's tons. Yeah. 
So we can never talk about it all. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. Unless you guys want to be here for like the next four hours, but I don't think Joe so. Rogan even like episode. Helsing, you know, Helsing. Um, there's zombies mm-hmm. like uh, Cabinary of the Iron Fortress, a zombie. You even get to talk about Death Claymore. Note, Claymore, Claymore. That's that was on my mind, man. Claymore oh. is freaking good. Yeah. Except for the oh. fucking dweeb ass side character that always holds <laughs> back. Claire, Claire. I hate that oh, you guy. really hate that guy. This is Rocky. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just it just oh. rubs me the wrong way. Maybe it's different because I've watched it in dub. Um, but, but Claymore. If you ever, if you're a Claymore fan, you know what I'm talking about. If you're a Berserk fan, you know what I'm talking about. Berserk too. Yeah, we even talked about Berserk. Oh, wow. Man. Shame on us, man. Wow, I know. Whew. I know part two. <laughs> Damn. It's not enough time, bro. Not enough time in the world. Oh, we are going to talk about. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. We're gonna talk about Chainsaw Man, and Ooh, yes. um, the good, good. Those are considered the horror. I mean, they got demons in them, devils. Um, they're gonna be in a part yeah. of our recap session. So, um, stay tuned. We got that coming up right now.